Welcome to part three of Squarespace Circles, How to Become a Web Designer course. We're excited to continue this journey with you as we delve into the essentials of building a successful web design career. In our previous lessons, we explored how to choose the right web design platform with Becca Harpain, and David Alex gave you a roadmap for preparing to take on your first client. And this lesson, we're taking the next big step, getting that first client and managing the entire process effectively. We have Christy Price, a web designer, Squarespace expert, and dedicated Circle member. Christy will share her expertise on securing your first client and ensuring a smooth and professional experience from start to finish. First, Christy will talk through how to effectively conduct consultations. She'll explain how to understand your client's needs, set expectations, and establish a solid foundation for the project. Next, she'll cover the onboarding process. From setting up agreements to outlining project timelines, Christy will provide actionable tips to make sure both you and your client are on the same page from the start. Keeping clients on track throughout the project is crucial, and Christy will share strategies for maintaining clear communication, managing feedback, and ensuring deadlines are met. Finally, Christy will discuss the offboarding process, how to wrap up the project professionally, ensure the client is satisfied, and provide any necessary follow-up support. Don't forget the importance of referrals. Christy will also touch on how to ask your clients for referrals to help you grow your business. This lesson is packed with practical advice that will help you confidently navigate from your first client project and build lasting relationships. So get ready to learn from one of the best. Here's Christy Price. Hi, I'm Christy Price. I've been a web designer for a couple of decades, and in 2018, I pivoted my business to focus solely on the Squarespace platform and haven't looked back. You're probably watching this because you're new to working with clients or a freelancer, or perhaps you're like me, and at some point you realized your project management systems were non-existent. Welcome to web design, where expectations meet reality. Now it's time to make sure you have a process in place to sustain a project from start to finish. Today, I'm going to walk you through everything from your first touch point with a client to the onboarding process, keeping clients on track, offboarding, and what to do after the project ends. One thing you'll hear me say again and again is the importance of setting expectations, following through, and communicating clearly with your client throughout the process. And before we get started, just know if something goes wrong along the way, it's happened to all of us. We learn and make our systems better with every client. I'll share some things you can try out as a starting point, and as you see what works for you, you can continue to develop and refine your process. Let's start with conducting effective consultations. Before you even have your first call with a potential client, it's helpful to have a clear online presence that outlines your services and sets the stage for working with you. On your website, be specific about the type of projects you're looking for. Also, clearly state what's included and what's not included in your services. You may want to have a list of add-ons, so it's obvious that those are not part of the basic package but can be included at an additional cost. Maybe services like SEO research, copywriting, social media, and email setups. This helps set expectations from the very beginning. Now, when you do have an initial call with a potential client, some people call it a fit call or a discovery call, here are some key questions to ask. One, what are your main goals for this website? Is it to get people on your email list, get people to book you for a service, or something else? This will guide the entire site architecture. Two, who is your target audience? Learn as much as you can so you can design the site for that particular audience. Three, what's your timeline for this project? You'll want to talk about the typical timeline for your projects to help set expectations, and if it's a rush job, then you may want to charge more. Four, do you have existing brand guidelines or assets? Find out if the client has a logo, color scheme, or a solid brand presence. If not, it may be on you to create this for the website. Charge accordingly. Five, and speaking of that, what's your budget for this project? Make sure it aligns with your offers. Get super specific during this call. Assume your client knows as much about web design as you do about quantum physics, unless you're secretly a quantum physicist, in which case carry on. During this initial call, reiterate exactly what's included in your web design services. It can be helpful to cover what's not included too, such as those add-ons that we talked about earlier. Once you've determined a project is a good fit, it's time for the onboarding process. And yes, it's a process. 
Onboarding starts with creating a clear detailed proposal based on that initial call. Your proposal should include one, the scope of the project, exactly what is included. Two, any scheduled meetings and details on the cost for additional meetings. Three, deadlines for when you need information from the client and a timeline with specific milestones. It can be a good idea to build in some buffer time here. Four, the review process and number of revisions included or timeline for revisions, and details on the cost if the client wants more. Five, contingency plans for delays or emergencies. Six, payment details, the amount and when each payment is due. You can refine your proposal as you work with more clients and evolve your process. Something I've added is what happens when clients want to reword text or change out images after they've seen them on the website. You can decide if this is something you'll do for them within the scope of the project, something you'll do at an additional cost, or something you can show them how to do once the website launches. Set expectations like these during the consultation call and in the proposal, and remind your client during the strategy call and throughout the website build. After the client agrees to the proposal, you can kick off with a video call to talk strategy. This is where you dive deep into their responses to your initial questions, walk through the planned structure of the new website, and hone in on the design direction. If you haven't already, it's helpful to send them a questionnaire ahead of time, asking for details such as inspiration websites and what they like about them, their competitors, and any concerns or worries they have so you can address those directly. This call is also a great opportunity to share your screen and show your client your preferred systems for content collection, website review, and how to communicate with you. It's also a good idea to record these calls so you can refer back to them for any details you discussed and your client can refer back to see how your systems work. As part of your onboarding, you'll want to educate your client on the web design process and their role in it. It's important to set yourself up as the expert so the client doesn't feel they need to take on any role in the web design itself. That said, you'll want your clients to feel heard when they have concerns or questions and give space for that throughout the process. Before ending the strategy call, ask your client if they have any questions. Be patient during the step and be prepared to answer directly and transparently. You may design websites every day, but there's a good chance this is a whole new world for your client. After the strategy call, gather all the necessary information and assets from your client, including website copy and content, logo files, color palette, brand information, and any images or videos they want to include on the website. Clearly communicate what you'll need from the client and how they should provide it, and refer them back to the screen share recording. I found it best to keep the content collection process separate from email and within a collaboration tool so all the content and questions are in one place, easily accessible and trackable for both you and your client. You may need to gently remind your client of these collaboration tools and communication boundaries during the project, but having all this information up front and in one place will allow you to get an overview before you start building the site, and it will help the project run more smoothly. This is also a great time to reiterate those deadlines and timelines, including when you need them to complete their content, your build process and milestones, the review process, and what is and is not included in your service. Sometimes keeping clients on track can be like herding cats, very, very opinionated cats, and regular communication is key. You should aim for at least a weekly check-in email, even if you're just waiting on content from your client. These regular reminders signal that you are a professional on top of the project and there to answer any questions to keep the project moving. Schedule calls during the website build so you can check in directly with your client. Sometimes it's hard to get a read on things over email and a call gives you the opportunity to walk your client through the work together and answer any questions they have on the spot. It can save a lot of time and reduce misunderstandings. One call you can schedule is a live website walkthrough of the homepage and one or two additional pages if you have them ready. This usually happens toward the beginning of the website build. It's a great opportunity to get initial feedback and make any necessary revisions to the design before getting too far along. And to keep everything organized, you can use a project management tool or checklist to track tasks and milestones. This helps you stay on top of deadlines and ensures nothing falls through the cracks. You should also send reminder emails for upcoming client responsibilities. For example, if you need their final content by a certain date, send a friendly reminder three weeks, two weeks, and then a week before it's due. 
Breaking larger tasks into smaller manageable chunks can also help keep the project moving smoothly. Instead of asking for all the content at once, you might request it in stages, maybe about page content first, then services, then homepage, and so on. Remember that buffer time you built into the project schedule? This is where it comes in handy. If there are unexpected delays, maybe the client is slow to provide content or you run into a technical issue, you have some wiggle room to meet your final deadline. Buffer time in your schedule is like an umbrella. You hope you won't need it, but you're really glad you have it when it starts raining client delays. If something unexpected happens, perhaps the client gets sick or you have a personal emergency, refer back to the clause in your proposal that deals with these situations. Clear communication and referring to agreed upon terms can help navigate these challenges. Throughout the project, it's important to reinforce the expectations and boundaries you set at the beginning. If a client asks for something outside the scope of the project, gently remind them of what was agreed upon in the proposal. If it's something they really want, you can discuss adding it either as an extra service with an extended timeline or later as a separate project after their site launches. Setting boundaries with clients is crucial. Otherwise, you might find yourself redesigning their cousin's dog's social media at 3 a.m. Trust me, it's happened. Lastly, don't underestimate the power of positive reinforcement. When a client provides content on time or gives prompt feedback, let them know you appreciate it. This encourages them to continue to be responsive and engaged throughout the project. By maintaining clear, consistent communication and staying organized, you can keep your projects running smoothly and your clients happy. A well-managed project is far more likely to end with a satisfied client who will recommend you to others. As you approach the end of the project, it's important to have a solid offboarding process. This is your chance to leave a lasting positive impression and set your client up for success. You can start by scheduling a final review and launch call with your client. This is where you'll address any last minute questions or make those final tweaks before going live. You can also give them a tour of the back end of the website. And here's where you can really shine. You can create a custom password protected help page right on their Squarespace site. Include things like the fonts and colors you've used so they can quickly find these without going into site styles where they might start changing things. Answers to frequently asked questions. Links to relevant Squarespace resources and video tutorials for common tasks the client might want to do themselves, like adding a blog post or updating team member information. You can record these as you build the website so it doesn't take additional time later on. Clients love this help page, and later if you work with them again, you can keep adding videos and information to keep everything in one place. Just make sure you set a password for this page so it doesn't randomly show up in results when someone searches for your client. Another client favorite is a sandbox page where you toggle off the header and footer and add saved sections for them to play with. Just like a real sandbox, a sandbox page is an opportunity for clients to play around and get to know the Squarespace platform. It makes them feel comfortable making changes on their site without your help or worrying they'll break something. You'll also want to include a support period after launch to fix any small issues that might pop up. But be clear that this doesn't include new design work or additional pages. Think of your support period like a warranty. It covers factory defects, not, I want 10 new service pages and a custom cursor. And if you're interested in an ongoing relationship with your clients, consider offering a maintenance plan. It's a great way to ensure recurring revenue and keep your client's website running smoothly. Once the project is complete, it's the perfect time to ask for referrals and testimonials. Even if there were some challenges, ask for feedback about your process. Your parent might say, it builds character. You can learn what you're doing well and where you need to improve. Some questions you might ask include, one, how did you feel before and after working with me? Two, what did you like most about the process? Three, what would you change about the experience? Four, what was your biggest takeaway from the process? Five, would you recommend me and who would you recommend me to? With your client's permission, you can use positive feedback as testimonials on your website and social media. This gives potential clients a real glimpse of what it's like to work with you. It's also an opportunity to see what words and phrases your clients use and include those on your sales pages. Don't be shy about asking for referrals. Your client probably knows someone who needs a website Keep it simple and friendly. Try something like this. 
I've got some openings for website projects coming up. If you know anyone who might need a new site, I'd really appreciate if you could pass along my name. A straightforward request like that can be surprisingly effective. And don't forget to thank your client. A simple personalized thank you note goes a long way. Or if you want to go the extra mile, consider sending a gift. If they haven't gotten around to providing feedback, this is a great time to remind them. The strategies we've discussed are all starting points. Stay flexible and keep learning from each project. As your business grows and changes, you'll continue to refine your process to best suit you and your clients. To review what we've covered, here are some key takeaways. Clearly communicate what you offer as well as what you don't. Have regular consistent communication with your clients. Set clear expectations and timelines. Prepare for the unexpected. Provide value even after the project is complete, and don't forget to ask for referrals and testimonials. If you want more information like this and a group of fellow professionals to connect with, join the Circle community. When you join Circle, you'll get extended trials for Squarespace websites, hosting discounts you can pass along to your clients, priority customer support, and access to a Circle-only forum of web designers and other creators. Remember, with great web design power comes great responsibility. Thanks for watching, and I wish you all the best with your web design journey. If you've enjoyed these lessons about becoming a web designer, check out the next chapter of the course, linked in the description of this video. We've got three more experts sharing advanced tips for running a web design business and designing sites on Squarespace. We can't wait to see what you create.